Hey, what's up? So this is the iPhone 12. And I've got to say, this is a really, really cool phone. It's got a bunch of like really awesome new features and it's a real leap up from the old iPhone 11. Getting right into it with the unboxing experience, it's already very different. In fact, specifically the box has been something that's gotten a lot of press lately because it's a lot slimmer and there's one very specific reason for that. During their presentation on stage a few weeks ago now, they introduced that Apple was going completely carbon neutral, which is completely awesome. But then they sort of snuck in a little detail. They're no longer including headphones or a charging brick in the box. While I appreciate Apple's steps towards a more sustainable future, it seems like a bit cheap especially considering that next year's phones are rumored to be completely portless. It seems like they could have gone maybe just another year with the charging brick. I'm also sort of annoyed that they only included one Apple sticker. It's sort of frustrating, but we're going to ignore that. Of course, the first thing that you notice when you take it out of the box is the build of the phone. And it's actually a lot different this year. The fundamental design of the iPhone really hasn't changed much since the iPhone 10, or you could go back as far as the iPhone 6 even, and it really hasn't changed that much. That is of course until this year where they brought back the design of like the iPhone 5 with the really boxy industrial corners. I don't think that's a reason to buy it, but it looks really cool. It almost feels sharp in your hands and it makes it feel, as I said before, a lot more industrial. The iPhone 12 is made out of aluminum, which makes it a bit lighter than the 12 Pro, which is made out of stainless steel. That also means that the 12 Pro has really shiny edges, whereas the 12 just has like matte edges. They both look really cool and they obviously come in their own selection of colors, which both look great. On the front of the phone, Apple has introduced like a new type of screen protector except it's not a screen protector, it's part of the glass. They're calling it ceramic shield, and supposedly it's ceramic crystals that are formed over a thin layer on top of the phone screen, and it's supposedly four times more drop resistant and scratch resistant, which sounds a bit too good to be true, but I guess we'll just have to wait for Jerry Rig Everything's drop test to find out. Apple's glass has always been some of the best in the market because it's just so strong. But to be honest, I'm not sure I see a need for it to be much stronger because so many people put cases on their phone and no matter how hard the glass is, I'm still gonna put like a glass screen protector on the front of my phone just in case. So I'm really not sure I see the need for stronger glass, but maybe that's just me. The final big introduction this year was the introduction of 5G, which is cool. I really appreciate that. In Grand Rapids here, we don't really have much 5G rolled out yet. Obviously we have T-Mobile's nationwide, and I think we have ultra wideband from Verizon in a few downtown streets. I really appreciate that they've rolled this out across their line and not just to specific phones like Samsung has done. It seems like a real integrity move on Apple's part, and it doesn't seem like it's really affected the prices all that much. My big question, and I haven't had much experience to test this out yet, is will it affect the battery life? Because according to Apple, they've implemented some software things so that it only uses 5G when it needs to, but a big issue with a lot of other 5G phones is battery life, and I'm wondering how that'll play in to the 17 hour battery life that Apple is advertising. As far as cameras go on the new iPhones, the hardware is pretty unchanged. The 12 Pro has the standard telephoto, wide, and ultra wide, and the 12 has the ultra wide and wide, same as last year. But Apple has introduced some new software features, which definitely add some value to these cameras. The first big change that they've added is the ability to use night mode on any of the lenses, which I am definitely a fan of. This means that you can get things like ultra wide night mode shots, which look really cool. It also means that you can take night mode selfies, which is sort of weird, but I appreciate the idea. 
Night mode has always been like my favorite feature of the new iPhones. It works so well and so easily that it makes night photography fun. The other software change that they made to the cameras was the addition of Dolby Vision. It's essentially a form of HDR, which according to Apple is going to allow you to take cinema grade movies from your phone, which I certainly appreciate the idea of, but I'm not sure if I'll use that too much. Other than that, the only other difference between the 12 and the 12 Pro is the addition of LiDAR, which let's be honest, ever since the iPad Pro came out, we sort of all saw coming. Apple seems to really believe in the future of AR, which is something that I've not really used, but I really see the potential of as well. The addition of LiDAR allows for much more precise AR, and it also allows for night mode portraits, which is something that I wasn't really asking for, but I guess it's a cool feature. But this brings me to my real takeaway from my time with this phone, which is that this is really all I need. The 12 Pro this year only brings a few minor updates to the table this year, and I really don't see them as necessary anymore. Both of these phones have 5G, water resistance, great battery life, uh, great processor, and pretty comparable displays since the 12 now also has an OLED screen. The Pro is of course made of steel instead of aluminum, which makes it a bit heavier, but I'll be honest and say that I prefer the look of the aluminum. It's a nice matte finish, but if you don't have an express need for the exclusive features in the 12 Pro, maybe save yourself a few hundred dollars and just get the 12 instead. But that's all I have to say for now. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you want to see more like this. And yes, I am aware that this is my second Apple video in a row. I have another one scheduled for next week, which I'm excited for. And uh, yeah, don't judge me. I like Apple, okay? <laughs> but thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. And uh, I'll see you next time.